Hello, folks. It's Weekender time, and this week I'm joined by John, Ben, and Free as we dive into the world of tabletop gaming. Before all that, though, if you haven't had a chance to check out last week's Salute coverage, you can pop over to the live blog on tabletop.com and have a look at what we got up to. There are interviews with companies very, very big and very, very small. Uh, there's looks at photo galleries of painted miniatures, display tables, and there's even some prizes to be won in there as well. So if you have a wee scroll through, you'll be able to see that you can get battle mats from the likes of Luke or Deep Cut Studios, uh, the Battle for Midway from Warlord Games, or Osprey Games have a massive bundle of prizes, including Frostgrave and the Undaunted series. To be able the chance to win any of those, comment on the video for the specific competition post, um, and we'll be looking at those at the end of next week. But for now, sit back and relax, because your weekend starts here. Hello, everybody. We are back from our little sojourn to London. Uh, we all managed to get in, have a wonderful time at Slut, and get out again. <laughs> so, did. Well done, us. Hooray. Uh, it's tricky to do sometimes. London's got a gravity all of its own. <laughs> Very much so, yeah. Uh, but we are back to bring you the latest and greatest in gaming from across the industry. And uh, we're kicking off with something that actually started last week, but we weren't yes. here, so we didn't get to tell you. So what's that then, Ben? Uh, so last week we kicked off uh, with four videos, four whole videos, wow. uh, the Global Gunslinger League. Uh, so this is what we've been doing in conjunction with War Cradle and, uh, and Wayland Games, where we've been putting together basically a slow grow league uh, by another name, um, where we sort of dive in and sort of take you through starting out with Showdown Retribution, mm -hmm. which is the, the awesome starter set for two players. And then guiding you through six weeks worth of then building that up and turning it into a full posse for you to use in your games. Um, Justin and Jerry have been taking part. Uh, Jerry's taken on the role of the Enlightened and Justin's playing as the Union. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we've got two weeks worth of videos out there at the moment. We've got everything you need to sort of dive into when it comes to starting out with Showdown Retribution and sort of getting that set all done and sort of playing with that on the tabletop. And we've also got the week two videos as well, where we looked at including um, some constructed henchmen and some armoured riflemen for both sides as well. So if you wanted some extra firepower and some extra muscle, you've got those to sort of pick up a play around with. The kind of way this is going to work going forward and you can see this in the links down below as well is that every week we'll have a new video talking about a new unit that you can add into either force or both if you want to you know be extra awesome um <laughs> and sort of why that's been added in uh thanks to chris from war cradle who's been sort of going through all that with us and then you can sort of spend the week painting up your miniatures and maybe playing some games with them uh we've also got this week and you will have seen these by now two painting tutorials by the lovely john uh who painted up uh both um nikolai tesla and also emily nuguier um <laughs> for both Very the nice. union and the and the enlightened <laughs> Um, I said it entirely wrong. In <laughs> I might have said it wrong as well. Uh, I, I made Chris say it in the video. Yeah. So. Uh, was that, how was he actually said that? Oh, I can't the remember. I, I keep defaulting to something entirely different. Yeah. So. I think it's Nougier. 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 The, the main thing is it's spelt right. Yes. Yes. Uh, but, um, both of those tutorials are really great from John. Uh, they kind of go into sort of like a uh, a basic scheme for both of those forces. So you can use this to paint Nikolai Tesla and then mm -hmm. take everything you've learned from that because John goes through all the basics of sort of like how to work with the miniature and everything and then translate that onto all of the other miniatures from the Union set as well and the same uh, with Emily for the Enlightened too. Um, so some really good stuff out there at the moment over the first two weeks. If you want to get involved, as I say, there's a link where you can follow that through and join the Global Gunslinger League. Mm. Um, once you go and check out that post, you'll find a PDF that you can download, which will include all of the information yep. that you need to get started with this. It also includes everything that you're going to need in subsequent weeks as well. So if you want to get a head start and not just buy things week by week, you can buy everything you want 
ahead of time for either faction and then just sort of get it ready for that week to paint up alongside mm -hmm. us in our videos and stuff. On top of that, there's also some prizes to be won. There's so more. Wait, there is there's more. more. Yeah. So if you head over to our project system, you can then, um, from the drop-down menu in the contest section, go to the Global Gunslingers League, and you can build a project. As you can see here, this one's yep. Justin. Gary is helpfully highlighting the Global Gunslinger League there as well. If you make a project and you fill it out with pictures of all the things you're painting and your battle reports and all battle sorts reports. of different things. We want definitely want battle reports. That would be reports. amazing. Uh, you could be in with the chance of winning uh, one of two Marvelous Exodus bundles at the end of this, which will give you all of the miniatures you want for the other side. So if you built all the Enlightened, you could win the Union, which is pretty awesome, I think. So you can basically get all the miniatures you've ever wanted. Uh, we're not just asking for people to put in stuff from this particular slow grow either. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got lots of other Wild West Exodus stuff that you want to show off, do it. Um, the main thing is that this is all sort of geared towards getting people started with the new edition of the game. Um, so maybe if you really like the Warrior Nation, uh, uh, make sure you put those miniatures in there as well and shelf what you're doing with those because that's mm -hmm. fantastic. But if you do follow along with the Slow Grow League itself, we actually have achievements that you can unlock as well. Uh, so you can sort of track your progress there and get some nice, new, neat badges that can be added to your profile and all kinds of things like that as well. So some awesome stuff in the mix for those people that want to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, We've had loads of content creators and everybody getting uh, involved in doing stuff like videos and everything at the moment, as you can yeah. see here. You can follow their lead. You can do something entirely different if you like as well. Uh, but yeah, it'll be really fantastic to see lots of people picking up Showdown and Retribution, yeah. getting started with Wild West Exodus and this new edition of the game. Uh, it's a really fun one. There's some really good miniatures in there as well. As I say, John's done an excellent job on putting together the painting tutorials for this as well. Yeah. So you, you basically have it everything you need to get started with the game that was a cool effect that was <laughs> did you see that that we nearly almost had two kills there in one video almost but yeah if you've ever been even curious of wild west Exodus, this is a great way to get started in. yeah check it all out mm. so, so yeah fantastic stuff yeah and like i say we'll be picking the winners for the prizes in January, first week in January. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. plenty of time to get involved. You don't have to worry about Indeed. trying to get everything knocked out in the next two days. Um, you've all the time in the world, or Ooh, was, at least all the time in 2021. <laughs> I was also going to say, if you're a veteran of Wild West Texas and maybe you don't feel like you needed to pick up the particular set or something and you've just gone for the rules and gubbins that are available this month for you to pick up over on their web store, um, tell your friends about it and get them involved. Maybe they are like, Ooh, what's this game you're playing, etc. cetera, blah, blah, blah. What are the rules for this? Tell them about the set, get them involved in the Gunslinger League, maybe go down to your local club and get people involved there as well, because that would be really fantastic, I think, to sort of draw people in and have fun with that too. Mm. So, yes, spread the word. Spread the word, spread the, the word. Spread the <laughs> exactly. If you have actually dipped into World West Exodus as well and you're not doing the Google Gunslinger League, it'd be great to see what you've actually been doing as well up on our project system. You guys might be into the Hex, you might be into another different faction altogether, so you might give some people some inspiration too. Exactly. We all want to see Teddy Roosevelt on a Raptor. Of course. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. I'm not saying that that will get you a prize. I'm just saying I want to see Teddy Roosevelt on a Raptor. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I've decided to do things easy because I don't like tormenting myself. So I'm doing like a, you won't be able to see this, but you'll see it in the project, my own little project. I'm doing Sky Earth Chrome on all the metallics uh, because that is the most complicated way I could do metallics. <laughs> and I like to torture myself, apparently. <laughs> Someday I'm just going to go spray black and dry brush a bolt gun, you know. Someday. Today is apparently not that day, though. But yeah, it'll be fascinating to see what else other people come up with. I know Very there's a few so. people out there, like uh, Butch <coughs> Legion has bought apparently all the posses because he's just gone completely ham on this. Um, so, yeah, I'm fascinated to see what Nick does next. Yes. Uh, yeah. So get involved if you join the Global Gunslinger League. Mm -hmm. You could use hashtags, I believe, kids. Yeah, I don't, I don't know yeah. what they are, where they live, so, but if, I've been told they exist. If, if you're on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, if you, if you, if you go there too, uh, maybe even tick. Talk. I don't, does that use hashtags? Anyway, you can, does, use yeah. hash, you can use hashtags to show off your stuff on social media, and I'd love to be able to see that as well. So you can use hashtag Global Gunslinger League mm -hmm. in order to, to, to get our attention, or hashtag OTTW. 
WWX, although you could use both of them and that would be even better. So yeah, if, you, if you're putting together content for this and you're not, you know, sharing it elsewhere on the project system, whatever, show it off on Twitter and Facebook and all that kind of um, lovely stuff and uh, we'll check it out. And, and that way maybe, we can we can find you. Exactly. <laughs> we'll maybe even showcase you in the future on, on the weekender because I want to try and bring a lot more information about what people are doing over the next couple of weeks because yep. it runs for six weeks. So watch out for that. And uh, yes. yeah, we'll, we'll show you off on the show. Cool. And or the gang. But now it's time to move on to the most important part of the show. Oh, yeah. In yes. fact, the only thing people tune in for, <laughs> I imagine, I don't know. People don't tell me anything. <laughs> it is, of course, the Indie of the Week. Oh. And this week's Indie of the Week is going off on a bit of a tangent. I'm oh, sorry. Because we're looking at tangent miniatures. That's what I did there. Stuck oh. together with the finest DJ glue. <laughs> finest DJ glue. Uh, so tangent do 28 mil. Mm -hmm. um, unusual slash old school style miniatures. They are 3D sculpted and I think you can even buy the 3D files for some of them but when I say old school it's because you get things that are very of an era so if you grew up in the 80s uh, you'll probably recognize some of these people <laughs> so for example if we kick off with uh, the Space Fleet Guardians and their bridge crew um, I'm not saying that the old school Battlestar was the best Battlestar I'm just saying that new one was terrible in comparison <laughs> So weirdly, this is the battle star that I grew up with because my dad uh, had us watching this one. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you see like your Apollos and your uh, Starbucks, they're the real Apollos in Starbucks and Starbucks, <laughs> and not some sort of terrible version. And I'm all for that. Uh, one of the things that they're probably very good for is for people getting into things like um, Seven TV, mm -hmm. where obviously you can recreate things like Battlestar or mm -hmm. like the Hitchhiker's Guide that we'll visit in a little while oh, on the yeah. tabletop. But uh, you can also use these for things like Stargrave. Or mm. not Star, yeah, Stargrave. Um, five cool parsecs view. from home, mm. things like that. Uh, Captain Costa. So do you see what they did there? It's not Starbuck, it's Costa. Oh! <laughs> Oh. And I'm not saying that one of the reasons I fell in love with Tangent Managers was their love of terrible puns for when it comes to the names. <laughs> but what I will say is I adore it. Uh, so, yeah, if you've ever wanted to have face with a Cylon walking past them, then, you know, you could do that. Very it's cool. all good. If uh, I don't do a series of outfits and call one of them pret a I'm going to be severely disappointed. It's, it's not bad I can see an alien called pret a <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> can't remember his name in the series but I, I remember the actor I, it was nice to see somebody who was a bit portly in a Borgens-esque way being stuffed into uh, Viper and sent on his on his merry way so, yeah. Zero G has got to have a benefit for something unless you're Porkins in which case it does not <laughs> poor, poor Porkins I'm just saying he only crashed because he turns the gravity way down in his cockpit so he didn't realise he couldn't control it <laughs> <laughs> that's in the expanded universe, and I still believe that's true. Wow! But yeah, so Fleet Guardians, obviously amazing. Nice. Um, the enemy pursuers, the, some of the oh, a tiny, tiny picture. What the hell was she? Let's try that instead. There we go. Oh, now we know. Not Gaius Baltar, you understand. Miles Traitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love them. These I, are very I, witty. They're great. I, I, I love them. I love them simply because they are what they are. Uh, more than anything else, you know. I have absolutely no problem with somebody going, I love Battlestar in the 70s and 80s, and I want this, well, in the 80s, and I want to see it on tabletop. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. the chances of a big company ever coming along and doing any of these is. I'm going to say slim to none. Oh, very unlikely, yeah. Uh, I'm going to open this one now and see whether or not any of the kids in the studio can tell me who they are. Oh, God damn it. I'll not be able to get any. Does anybody know any of these? The kids in the studio. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Would it help if I told you the film they come from? That narrow down? Yeah. Maybe, because then I'll be able to tell you whether or not I... 
Don't I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. This guy. The film is The Last Starfighter. No. No. <laughs> Never seen it. Sorry, oh. Jerry. Oh my god! You all need to go and watch The Last Starfighter immediately. That's Greg. Greg, okay. who's uh, a queer <laughs> captain. Can I add it to my list? Uh, the Last a, Starfighter. Oh, the sorry. Last the last Starfighter. Okay. Um, I like the fact that you've got him when he's just being recruited. So it's Alex Rugen, I want to say was a surname. Okay. Uh, kid who ended up playing a arcade game at the trailer park he lived in, and it turned out it would all been set up to recruit, to find the best Starfighters, um, um, to recruit okay. them for the Star League. So in that case, Centauri there was the guy who sent that machine out as a way to, to recruit people. Right. Alex Alex gets ends up being uh, drafted by the Star League, freaks out, comes home. Meanwhile, the rest of the uh, pilots are all killed by saboteurs. And uh, Zer and the Kodan Armada, there's Zer, uh, arrive to discover only one starfighter looking to take them on. It's an amazing film. I need to rewatch it. Death Blossom. Oh. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, he's having a reminiscence. I, I, I really am. Yeah. And, and this, I mean, the fact that you've got obviously the 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 traitors and all the rest, but then you've also got Warrior Strength there. I could have come up with a better name for that. That's just his girlfriend, Maggie. At the end, Maggie uh, leaves. They lived in the Star Bright, Starlight uh, trailer park. Otis gives this really touching speech as they take off. Good Ooh. times. Good times. <laughs> Listen, this is why I'm here to reminisce <laughs> during the end of the week. You all have to sit there and like it. Well, Those Joe, are the rules. I've come up, I've got a new film to watch today. So there you go. They, they've talked about rebooting it several times, but thankfully every time they do, the company that's talked about doing it goes under because some things do not need rebooted. Hallelujah. Here's a prime example. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. These Love are it. the only versions of the Hitchhiker's Guide I accept. Uh, that no, remake, Beeble, that that film was terrible. Oh. That's Zephod. Mm. Is this guy bothering you? <laughs> There's. <gasps> that's the proper Marvin the Martian. Oh yes, Marvin the Martian, brain the size of a computer. We're sorry, brain the size of a planet. Uh, not not one whose brain is actually the size of some sort of giant inflatable zorb. <laughs> that was a terrible they, film. And, yeah. When I was walking around Salute and I said they had one of these printed out about 30 centimetres tall on top wow. of the stand. That's it's cool. like, ah, oh, I need to get back and see them. <laughs> anyway, so, right. I, I, was like, I, I listened to the, was it a B, was it the BBC who did like it, the radio version? That's yeah. one that I, I, I remember. So, so it started with the radio version. Mm -hmm. Then the novels came after the radio version. Oh, and then the TV show okay. came. Really? After. Yeah. So it was written as a radio play. Um, nice. And then the, the the books came out afterwards. Austin yes. Allegro for four Austin prefect. For four prefect. <laughs> Part of us were going, well, let's well, have a quick look at him since we're here. You built an intergalactic bypass through my planet. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got his digital thumb for hitchhiking. He does. Oh. Does he have his, uh, I hope he has a, a lovely toe that tastes of barbecue sort of or, or whatever it was. That you <laughs> Yeah. They make the hippiest frou frou in the galaxy. Yeah. That one. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Always have your towel. Very, Always very have your towel. Well, Artemis McGowan has his towel. Is it Arthur? Arthur Dent. Nice. Arthur Dent. Arthur Dent. Yeah. He's, oh my he's God, he's got, got the mice, got mice as well. in his pocket. Oh, See? that's, that's so beautiful. I love this, that. this is why we're here. <laughs> Uh, let's go back, back away from the uh, the stars, and into the past. <gasps> Ooh, uh, where are we uh, going? Well, I want to go to tangent a historical, mm -hmm. cool. um, because they contain two very relevant sets of miniatures, uh, relevant mm. of all ages. There is the Cunning Crew. So, anybody who's seen Black Adder will know these. Oh, Wolf! Winkle Wolf. <laughs> Wolf by name, Wolf by nature. <laughs> General Ba. You've landed your plane in our trench. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fab. Melchi. Oh, yes. A darling. Yes. Yes. Oh, darling. <laughs> I want to cuddle darling. your toes. <laughs> God, it's really, it's too much to. Oh dear. 
Uh, Very Lurie fabulous. Lurie. <laughs> Two Laurie Lewis, actually. Mm. <laughs> uh, Blackadder himself. And where's a Lieutenant the Lord Tiddlywinker? <laughs> what else, friends? Squiffy copped a packet sausage side. Amazing. I have no idea what that means, but I heard he died. <laughs> I heard he died, yeah. <laughs> These are fantastic. I love those, yeah. Yeah. I oh, should probably have a look at a Baldrick while we're here. Oh, you have to. Hello, Baldur. You keep these little glasses. His glasses and his big scarf. So these are obviously 3D um, sculpted, but do they do them in resin or metal? Then? That's the... Uh, the ones I've seen have been cast in metal. Okay, um, right. But that was a, a while ago, so I don't know if they've shifted into resin since then. Okay. Um, the very first range I ever seen from Tangent was the Hitchhiker's Guide, um, mm -hmm. and there was pretty much nought else on the site at that stage. Mm. Right. Uh, so a lot of this stuff has come since. Uh, obviously, we're talking a lot about Silver Bayonet at the moment. Mm -hmm. So if people are, are after a variety of British riflemen for games of Silver Bayonet, Oh then my god! You two can get your hands Very on good. a Captain Blunt. Oh my god! <laughs> I need that beautiful bastard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want a Sergeant Larper carrying the seven-barrel knock gun, <laughs> Big Darrow Mally. Second best rule. So great. After like he's, he's, and I. He, he's very well well endowed as well, isn't he? Oh wow, you know, yeah. Well, he's Irish. <laughs> uh, it doesn't it doesn't help that every picture comes up as a as a crotch or a bone. No, 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 no. yeah. <laughs> if you were at Salute, uh the actor who played Harris was there. He yeah, was, he was yeah. Um yeah. yeah, and he was there in uniform, including the, the soft bonnet. Hair mm. isn't quite as ginger or as long anymore. <laughs> Shorter and greyer, but then aren't we all? Uh, These if, are really cool. Oh, they're they're, they're really absolutely good. absolutely beautiful. Uh, mm. Pigswill, so played by Pete Pufflethwith, oh, who, yeah. uh, who had the stolen picture of the Colonel's wife in the bottom of his hat. Talked yeah, to him like yeah. it was his mother. Nobody could kill me, Sharpie. He always did the neck twist every time he was talking. <laughs> Man, I need to watch Sharp yes. again now. Yeah, watch <laughs> Sharp again. And Sacrum Bill, so Sweet William. Not actually a 95th rifleman, but um, 60th, I think. Yeah. The nice thing about these as well is it looks for the most part that they're all one piece as well. So mm. yeah. just stick them on the base and away you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, that's you, great. you may find the poses are slightly flatter because of that um mm. but no with, no no issue for me is with <laughs> with the positioning of most of them yeah yeah you know like polly which is just a great name for perkins um <laughs> he still looks like he has a bit of dynamism to him I yeah, like, they're, all, they're, uh, all, they're doing something yeah mm. i like the needle and of course since you you asked for him I, i'm trying to remember was his name duco in sharp was that who it was? I can't remember. I remember him being, he was technically not oh. part of the military, but he just came around every so often and annoyed Sharp's happiness. <laughs> he's still isn't wearing that, his isn't hat. That every, every Sharp episode. <laughs> he's, he's wearing his hat up to the point where, uh, oh, Darrow Malley's character. What's he called? Harper. Harper shoots it off, but he doesn't have time to load properly, so he actually knocks it off with the ramrod, I think it was. They come back and Dara's sitting at the side of the road with it perched on his head like some sort of massive seven foot leprechaun. <laughs> but amazing. Like enough those. of those. I say enough of those. Actually. <gasps> oh actually oh. is There's more. There's somebody in here I want to find, but I'm not sure where he lives. I may have to I should have wrote it down earlier. Um but a bit of bit of I will check the dystopian. Nice. Because it's entirely possible he lives in dystopia. Look, Got a nice uh, snake pliskin there. Great yeah. snake pliskin. Yeah. A uh, whole host of, I was going to say oh. randomers, but you know. I thought it's escape artists. <laughs> yeah. I just saw some not handmade tales. Yep. They're not them. Yep. Uh, I don't know if they've got a, they do. 
there is there. This is important that they have a very rowdy wrestler. I love how they've called it Mallet Man. It's Rowdy Roddy Piper, <laughs> um, which is good if you want to play They Live, but they also have a selection of Frogtown miniatures from Welcome to Frogtown, which is <laughs> I, I, Roddy's... <laughs> Oh, I mean, between They Live and Welcome to Frogtown, I'm not sure which is Rowdy's, Roddy Piper's <laughs> best film. Welcome to Frogtown's a whole whole other thing. Um, there's Snake. And why Serpent. And <laughs> the LA version. One of these men can surf on a 3D graphical design. <laughs> and one of these men has more uh, respect for himself. <laughs> let, you, let you decide which is which. Yeah, well... <laughs> Brilliant. Cobra That's Snake. Cool. Great very, set. Very cool. Absolutely lovely set of escape artists. Mm -hmm. I think I'm I think it lives in Rogue, maybe. And if it doesn't, I'll be very, very upset that you can't have everything. So they do a few miniatures for other people as well. Okay. Where you're right. waiting by the castings. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've got very 1920s, 1930s Flash, Gordon-esque, you know, even into the 50s B-movie era, retro spaceman. Um, space mercenaries, again, good for Stargrave or five parsecs. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. The Chrononaut grandfather is just awesome. Um, so you, I would imagine that's based on the Peter Cushing version of the grandfather from the doctor who film oh, that's who okay. it looks like right. more than the oh, i can't remember who played the grandfather hartnell rather than the hartnell's version of it from the tv series but again different it's Very just fun rogue. stuff that you can make like yeah. the thing that I, I quite like about it is that like you could then pick up some sort of plastic kits from whatever company you you wanted hmm. and then throw these kind of miniatures in alongside it to sort of make your stuff feel a bit more unique yeah. and original so yeah and Ooh. for again for silver bayonet, silver bayonet we have sweeney todd like people mm -hmm. um we have i mean you need doctors and occultists and hunters and things like that and these nice. have these have both the suited feel um with a little twist to them so they will easily go in there i mean finding as i as i've been I'm not gonna say bitching but as i've been inquiring <laughs> about finding a vampire that looks just like a, a regular human and you know so having somebody like this could easily go in as a vamp mm -hmm. uh, to, with the right paint job yeah mm. uh, I, I you could use those as well i mean of course you wouldn't jerry but mm -hmm. if you wanted to have some kind of miniature based representations of your characters in Vason, for example. Mm. You could use some of those as your characters and things in there. That'd oh, be really cool. yeah. Yeah. That's Come up against some monsters. Mm. That's very nice. And a vampire hunter. So, yeah. Oh, got some wolves as well. Yep. Spot the werewolf. Troll. And good boy. Ah, oh, good dog eye. Nice. Sometimes you just need them. <laughs> Sometimes oh, I need to. I need to find this because it will annoy me if I don't. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it is back in space. I just didn't go far. What, what is it you're looking for, Gary? <laughs> I, I do you want to? No, it doesn't want to say. Uh, okay, I, I really right. don't want to say, but I may have to say because I may have to. I may have to go hooking for it anyway. <laughs> in fact, I'll do this while I click open things in various places. Uh, I don't know if you remember. The comic reliefs they used to do um, Blackadder episodes, like little short Blackadder episodes in comic relief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of them, Blackadder and Baldrick, are in the far, far future and they're wearing like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think the only appropriate way to describe it is Space Gimp armor. <laughs> they do that. Yeah. It's in oh, here somewhere. Brilliant. I, I just need to find it so I can share it with you. And then you can all go, why have you shared this with me? Ah, because it's only pre-order. That's why. That's why he's not on any set yet. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was the Ghost of Christmas Future. I remember it now. Space Gimp. Is that the one you're talking about? 
I don't know. Is it? That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... So and he's, then... he's great, obviously. That is himself. really cool. And Baldrick's in his little um, wire front. Baldrick is. They haven't, <laughs> they haven't done a Baldrick yet, uh, but we do have... Stuck me a clipper. I'll be back for Christmas. <laughs> it's Ace Rimmer. <laughs> and if they do the Red Dwarf crew, I will. No shit. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> very, very much so. Nobody's done a Red Dwarf crew in forever and a day. I don't think so, no. So, you know. I was trying to remember whether or not 70V at the Cricket Dice had done a Spectrum team. They have, which means you could do a rimmer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, SIG. They're quite cute. Like them. But yeah. So, Tangent Miniatures. Mm. Um, They also do some stuff under license from Power Sword and Rogue and Novus. Um, So, So you got vehicles and all sorts of different things. So, vehicles and and so these things here, um, sort of below the line, are. Lots of that, they're three D. It's a three D company that they've got a, a uh, okay, right. agreement they... with, so they where they will print them. Yes, they are banana men. I just banana just banana man with eggs. Whoa! Yeah, Why not? I've just realised that was yeah. Okay, yeah, that's yep. we better split, yeah. boys. That's all I can hear. Oh, <laughs> all, all of that. Um, <laughs> if you're into your. Uh, unusual games like Turnip or Sludge. Yeah. They've got these strange looking Madrek crew things. Uh, there's there's the Frog Town monster if you want to set uh, Rowdy Roddy up against them. They also do a few actual uh, Turnip figures and there's also Zorg and stuff as well. Like I say, these are done under license from, oh, I can't remember who they are. Tw- Twisted Pentacle maybe? But yeah, so if you want to, nice. if you don't have a 3D I printer, have to go and do some exploration. So. Yeah, if, if you don't have a, a 3D printer, you can pick yourself up, you know, cast versions of these um, nice. from the guys. You can do your turnip journey, pss, yeah. your turnip 28. Um, so yeah, tangent miniatures. <sighs> what a brilliant indie. For one time, I've not gone off on a tangent. Hmm. I have, but it was the deliberate, oh, the deliberately irony. off on a tangent. Um, I'll let you. Mull that one over. I think I'm going to go right ahead and okay. order all of the uh, the last Starfighter. Right, <laughs> right, let's take a break. I'll order some toys, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe, covering board games, war games, card games, and all that shit you love. It's the but. News. <laughs> All right, and back for some news. We're going to be delving into everything tabletop that's been going on over the last couple of days. Uh, we start out with something that was actually brought up in the uh, forums that I was like, "Ooh, this is interesting." So I'm going to name drop you again, Darth Cheese, because this was fun. Uh, so Hero Quest, which you may remember was on the Haslabs slash Hasbro Pulse thing. Uh, was it last year? Now I can't remember. Or was it the year before? Everything is melded into one. But anyway, that came, that was recent anyway. Uh, and it was effectively a, um, a re- rebirth, a resurrection of the classic Hero Quest game uh, that everyone knows and loves from back in their childhood. Uh, and a lot of people dived in in it. There were a lot of celebrities involved. Everyone was really into it. It was really awesome. Do you also remember a game many, many years ago from Ludo Vila and Game Zone Miniatures, which was also called Hero Quest, mm. but never really saw the, the light of day? Well, 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 well. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> uh, that game is still reportedly coming out next year. Sure. However, the rights to it, the rights to sort of UK and EU distribution in, met, in many respects, have now reversed back to Hasbro and Avalon Hill. And so now, UK and EU customers are going to be able to pick up that version of Hero Quest that I was just talking about from Hasbro next year, early in January, which is pretty cool. So if you missed out on the Haslabs one or you didn't get one of the um, retailer copies that they were doing at the time through the likes of Zatu and that kind of stuff, um, you are now able to pre-order this version of Hero Quest right now, uh, which will be shipping in January. Uh, It comes not with all the bells and whistles of the the big version from, from the Pulse Kickstarter, as much as it were, I guess a fundraiser, 
Uh, but you do get the four new, the four heroes there, based on the classic ones uh, from the original game. You get a mix and uh, of lots of different new style monsters as well. So they've taken things like the gargoyle and that kind of thing as well, and they sort of reinvented that. But then there's also nice. a whole bunch of other creatures that they've put in there. So you've got like updated versions of the Chaos Warriors and all, all that kind of thing as well. So some really cool miniatures in there, and actually the least turned out quite nicely from from uh, the folks over at Hasbro. I think they're pretty cool. <laughs> Um, the game itself is still exactly the same as it was back when it first released. Uh, so nothing has changed mechanically, which I think is a little bit of a shame. We did talk about this when they, this was initially uh, up on that fundraising platform. And we were like, it's a real shame that they didn't do something new with this. But I guess if you missed out on Hero Quest back in the day and you didn't fancy picking up an eBay copy or something, because um, they're all still quite expensive in most cases, uh, then this would be a good chance for you to dive in and play some nostalgic dungeon crawling adventures on the tabletop. Um, for those people that maybe owned Hero Quest and wanted to have a new version of it, that's also a good option, I guess, as well. Uh, but yeah, um, this one's up for pre-order now and you'll be able to get it in January. Um, you'll also see that uh, I, I took it as an opportunity to show off the awesome uh, sort of Hero Quest dungeon build that we did as part of our hobby blog last year, uh, where we used the dungeon as latest terrain in order to bring a dungeon to life. And it looked pretty damn awesome by the end of mm-hmm. it, I thought. Um, Weirdly, yeah. I think that's just hit retail as well, because I see North Star have announced that they're going to have dungeons and lasers in stock from uh-huh. next week, yeah. week after. So if you want to build your own Hero Quest board, then you can definitely do that, which is pretty cool. Um, I should also note as well that they did say something, I can't remember if this was in the initial game, hmm. but they did say that they've put in things about sort of limitless replayability where you can make your own quests and things like that. Nice. I don't remember that in the initial rule book. I have it above it- me. It wasn't well, I, in the initial rule book. There I you go. So, beyond yeah. beyond the fact that you had the components and you could do whatever you wanted, stick a door wherever you want. I essentially think that's thing. probably what they're doing here, really. So, <laughs> but uh, 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 they yeah. did expand on that in one of the expansions, possibly one of the mm. first expansions, because I think yeah. they're actually doing little expansion sets as well. They, uh, they probably, I, nice. I would imagine they will do. Um, I think I see boxes think, somewhere showing, yeah. you know, like you can get this with these additional characters in it. Uh-huh. Um, it's too push it beyond the the initial board game and add a few more bits and bobs yeah. it's it'll be interesting it's mm-hmm. it's a as we said at the time mechanically it's dated compared to what we're used to these days yeah for new players it's got good easy entry for people mm-hmm. wanting to buy yeah, it. it's good for kids definitely yeah, yeah for people want so. to buy it for that retro nostalgia feel mm-hmm. they may find it comes up short very very quickly yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, and you're not getting a ton of miniatures either. Uh, no. I, I think there's right. like 40, 41 in the I box. Yeah. I guess it mirrors exactly pounds. the contents of the original ones. So. I don't think it does. Do you not but, think so? No, I, I think you're getting less in the way of monsters. Admittedly, the old wrong. plastics were it's very, very <laughs> questionable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the zombie still stands up to this day as one of the best. As does the mummy. Actually, the mummy was great really good cast on that but anyway regardless even if it does mirror exactly um it, it may feel a little jaded to modernize when you look at things uh, like yeah. uh black letter um with what they've done with the damnation, damnation yeah. um gothic game and went well we could play it like the old ludo style one shot you're dead type thing but mm. modern audiences would look at that and go why why are we even playing this? So mm. went in and did the did the additional work just to breathe a bit more life into it. Yeah, and I think yeah. possibly Hero Quest could have done with the. Same. I think it, it could easily have, have have had something tweaked or changed in there. Just like for example, just the random movement thing, <laughs> rolling yeah. the dice. It's just so old. It, um, it's yeah. bad for me as well because I never roll higher than about two. Exactly. So. <laughs> we found that out in our let's plays and role plays. And stuff. Yeah. Uh, I should also say that the game's own miniatures version of it, which has been renamed to this Quest. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to call it Quest, but they've yeah. done like a weird palindrome oh. thingy with it, um, which is odd. But anyway, that is still apparently coming out with all the same components that they promised. Sure. Um, but you can, if you want to. If you back the initial game zone fundraiser for that, you can swap that copy that you ordered for the copy of the Hasbro one. So oh, if you want that, right. you can do that. I, I think pretty much everybody's going to go, yes, that please. I'd like something for my money. I You've had it for so long. So I forgot what my so, money looked like. So that was quite interesting in yeah. the reading that in the text between the two companies. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so it, I, I, clearly they've come to some kind of agreement, yeah. cordially or not, I suppose, but uh, we shall see. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it may just have been a case of you, you want the uh, you want the license for that name in this part of Europe. We hold it. Yeah, you, you fulfill this because we're never going to do it. More or less, perhaps. I mean, but, uh, yeah. It's been a while. I, I, know, I know a lot of people who backed the fundraiser for the updated version from Hasbro, and you know they're happy enough to they're happy enough with what they were being offered. So. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it manages to tick all those nostalgia boxes or whatever. And it, you know, if if it if it gets more kids or whatever into playing um, dungeon crawling adventures on the tabletop, then so be it. So yeah, time will tell. <gasps> Fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. So free, where are we off to next? Right. Well, when I discovered this game, I sent it to Ben within the first couple of minutes, and I pretty much went, "Oh my god, Ben, look how cute this is!" Right. That's how it went. <laughs> So it's from Plaid Hat Games. And if you're a fan of titles like Mice and Mystics or Stuff Fables, like going through like a storybook, there's an upcoming board game from Jerry Hawthorne as well. And it's called Familiar Tales. Titles are dead giveaway. What do you think? What do you think it's about? Right. So the game focuses on like a narrative driven story. So you've got cooperate, you've got a deck build through a fantasy kingdom. So you've got magic, you've got the forces of good and evil, and more importantly, you've got a damsel in distress, uh, a teeny tiny damsel in distress, and I might add as well. So heroes over like a huge storybook and... Do you see what I mean by the titles, by the picture? Why well, it's called mm. Familiar Tales. Do you, get it? Do you get it right? So whether you want to go it as solo or with your adventurers as well, it's going to put players as a personal protector of the baby princess. So it means one, two, four of you will become the protectors um, and parents, realistically, um, as wizards' familiars, which I think is really, really sweet. So these four familiars, um, you have a fox, you have a stone golem, you have a fairy, and you have a frog, which was once human. So all very whimsical, all very good protectors. So the villains, quite obviously in this story, do not want to see the princess alive. So not only are players going to be traveling through protecting them they're going to also be kind of filling the mind and forming who is going to become the monarchy of the magical kingdom which was cool so they're going to be looting collecting and equipping your way as you progress through you've got to collect armor you've got to collect weapons and all of this is done through a card drafting mechanic which is very fun so you're going to be collecting as you go and upgrading so there is a companion app as well i can hear jerry shuddering inside as i say there is a companion app there is there will be a companion app um to download so not only will you get your rule book on there as well you've got loads of music to see you through the campaign and there's also digital um decision making support as well so yeah, there's loads on the Familiar Tales website as well. So if you do, if you are keen on the little adorable miniatures, you can actually see a 360 close up of all the miniatures as well. But uh, it does look like a lot of fun, it's especially I love a narrative themed board game anyway, going through a story, especially in a fantasy universe, especially when there is adorable animals included. <laughs> Um, but uh, I am certainly going to keep my eye open for this one. So this yeah. one's set to come out uh, beginnings of next year. So uh, I, think I think this looks really cool. Uh, I, I like that it's taking that sort of premise that they sort of started with stuff fables and, as you say, Mice and Mystics. Yeah. And sort of building on that. Uh, I mean, one of the things that a lot of people complained about with Mice and Mystics was that it was great, but the mechanics were a little bit iffy. Mm-hmm. And then I think as they've moved into other, their other games, like, for example, Stuff Fables, yep. I think they perfected that and then made it a really nice sort of match between kind of like being fun for people who like lots of board games and are veterans of it, yep. and also people who are new to it, like kids, for example. Um, and then I think this kind of takes things to the next level. I think you've got that really nice sort of like storybook style and the, the ease of gameplay. But then I love that they've got the extra campaign stuff built into that. So kind of like, you know, following the child through their growth, through their young years before they become the princess and all that kind of thing, I think is really yeah. awesome. And as you say, those miniatures are lovely. <laughs> they are. They are whimsically wonderful. So uh, I'm really going to be looking forward to this one. I'm more than likely going to pick it up. Um I will try and play for it solo as well. I think it'd be a really nice mm. one to go through. I love just the story aspect of it. Don't I don't yeah. know if whether you have to use the companion app or not. I don't know if this is fixtured into the game or whether you're going to just it's there as a help if somebody does like to use it. So fingers crossed you don't um for the likes of Jerry's out there. But uh, yeah it's gonna look I like see a no need for apps. I'll be interesting Obviously, it's one to four players. If there's the potential to expand it in future expansions mm. to make it a larger player count, or 
if potentially it's tied to one to four because of i mean if the app is just going go here do this and then tell us what your next choice is potentially then they can they can expand it without too much yep. effort um mm -hmm. if it's more intrinsically tied to the player count uh, that may limit where they can go in future, but mm. interesting to see. Obviously, would have been better with Squirrel. But, you know, <gasps> I know it's slightly disappointing. I, I don't know if there's there's a couple of whimsical characters hidden around the Golem, but I don't think there's a Squirrel. I will I will say if you, if that style of game interests you as well, and you've not played something like Stuff Fables or whatever, or maybe you have played that, check out Ryan Lowcut's stuff. So Red Raven games. Um, so that's like Above and Below, Near mm -hmm. and Far, and all these kind of games. They are really really good fun. I played Near Afar this week on Monday, and it was it was a nice storytelling adventure with lots oh, of interesting nice. board game mechanics in there as well. So, yeah, there's there's plenty of fun ones out there that you can have a have a pop out before this comes out next year. So sweet to the beat. Uh, staying with smaller things, but this time round it's scale rather than actual Ooh. size. Ben, <laughs> printing in detail. Uh, yeah, so printing in detail. I have uh, been working alongside. Um, some more 3D sculptors, in this case, Mini Rat Studios, uh, which we have talked about on a, mm. on a previous uh, 3D printing is the shears. Mm. Uh, and uh, this is their collection of mercenaries who are going to be available for those people playing their 10 millimeter fantasy games. So perhaps you're diving into some War Master or maybe playing some fantastic battles or something to that uh, in that ilk. These are there for you to dive in and pick up. Um, once again, these are some of probably the best printed versions i think mm -hmm. of 10 mil figures on the market uh i had a look at their elves uh myself a couple of months ago now and i know jerry's done an unboxing of some of the um the wood elf stuff i think I've it was wasn't sitting it? there yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it is genuinely basically as you see there there's no cleaning up or anything really to do easily snap them off easily cut the bases apart and all that kind of thing so you can use them in your games Genuinely, really awesome. Uh, and they've now branched out to include things like the Mercenary Pikeman that we just saw, this light cavalry unit. Uh, they're also working on some crossbowmen uh, for you to pick up and play around with. And then finally, there's also a galloper gun as well. So they've really filled in all the um, the slots in your force organization chart, I guess, <laughs> uh, for if you're putting together a little bit of a, a Dogs of War style army. And you may recognize that they're quite familiar mm. uh in in their look and i'm sure jerry can tell us the titles of each of these <laughs> i certainly noticed how familiar they are um shame we can't see this from the other side so this is bronzy nose galloper gun if mm. he's got a peg leg on the other side <sighs> if his right leg is missing that would be hilarious spot on knowing uh, mini rat and, and knowing mini rat i think he probably <laughs> does so <laughs> uh Braganza's procedures nice so there we have everybody's favorite previous Heavy mercenary crossbow. Uh, Al Mukhtar's desert dogs with mm. little blind Ibn, his uh, standard bear, who also had a ridiculous save. He was the, the Macari or Macri or whatever way you want to call Gasgill's grot oh, right, uh, of okay. the human world. You just couldn't kill him. Ran about the standards. <laughs> Doesn't matter that he's blind, he's not getting touched. <laughs> and the Al Katani uh, pikeman with uh, Rodrigo. Amazing. Yeah. And yeah. the interesting thing about this is, apart from the fact that it gives you fantasy style units with different weapon types. Mm -hmm. So if you're, I mean, if you're playing Warmaster, these don't exist unless somebody's added them for Warmaster Revolution, which is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic battles, you can go nuts um, because all that stuff's in there already. Um, but Mini Hammer has been getting a little bit of a boost of late thanks to things like this, uh, where people are literally playing 10 mil Warhammer, oh, okay, which right. is why sometimes when you go to a 3D printing site, they'll be on strips for Warmaster, but you'll also mm -hmm. have them as individuals, mm -hmm. so they can be based up for individual figure removal, which a 10 mil is mental. <laughs> I, I did it yeah. at 20 mil, and we, after about two days, we went, this is madness. Let's just multi-base these things. Yeah. <laughs> Individual figure removal in 170 seconds was bad. 10 or, mil stuff is just insane. Or oh, hope that your opponent kills five wounds worth of models well, yeah, in one go, yeah. and then you can just take the... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's not so much yeah. easier. Um, <laughs> but considering the way many rats worked in the past, where it's sort of like you get a block of stuff, and then a month or so later you get another chunk, yeah. um, I imagine we're going to see more of the Dogs of War, which was one of the most interesting fantasy armies. Uh, that GW did. So I want to see my Birdmen of Alcatraz 
um, or Cataraz. Long Drong Slayer Pirates. Long Drong Slayer Pirates, Pirates yeah. Bjorg's Bear Men. Uh, simply because it was such a desperate group of, of figures, you could play a full, as I did, a full um, heavy armoured army where you've got Brigands, Besiegers, Ricos, and Vermins, yeah. Venators. So they all have the same Italian war style heavy armour and have a very medieval theme. Or you could just go, I want to have some of every fantasy race in there. I want to have a bit of Skaven, a bit of Undead, a bit of Orcs, some Ruglugs armoured Orcs. Um, you know, you could just, you could just have, you could have an army that allowed you to paint everything uh, mm. without having to do it to extremes uh, if you were just painting a whole army of Orcs. So a, a 10 mil version of it. Um, I didn't know I brilliant. needed it in my life, but I'll take it. <laughs> take it. I will. I will. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on then, free. Right. It's not exactly spooky season anymore, but I'm not going to stop me talking about anything that is spooky. So, especially, there is a spooky board game coming over from Weird. Mm. It's nothing to do with Malifaux. It's nothing to do with the other side. It is something called Vagrant Song. So, Vagrant Song is coming out at the end of the month and it puts players on a train aboard the Silver Ferryman, especially uh, where all of the carriageways have been haunted. And this has been inspired um, by American folklore. So players will be working as vagrant children, hoping to escape the train. But on the train, as you know, there is some haunted spookies hanging around and they are called haints. So they are lost spirits who walk the carriageways, stuck wandering where they didn't want to be stuck. So the job of the vagrants is to release these lovely lost souls and return them to, you know, life after death. But you'd think that these haints would be sick and tired of being stuck on the silver ferryman after all of these years. Wrong. They're quite bitter about it. They're not very happy about these vagrants coming along and ruining their life. Well, afterlife, as it were. So <laughs> they've got to save the souls that wander the train and hope to escape them, that those vagrants don't get locked on the journey as well. So it's not as easy as just kind of going to carriageway along carriageway and hoping to find them. Uh, you'll get given loads of scenarios where you get to provide the special abilities of each different vagrant you're playing. So whether you want to go as a uh, curse bearer, a wayfarer, or a runaway, where, by the way, she does have an adorable canine by her side that does help out. <laughs> each ability uh, does have the ability to customise the gameplay depending on what character that you play. So this game was released at Gen Con last, well, Gen Con just gone. Mm -hmm. A couple of players got their hands on it, but the official release is at the end of the month. So there are quite a lot of people really playing Vagrant Song out there. It did sell out at Gen Con. I'm quite looking forward to how this is going to play out. And it certainly does look adorable. It looks amazing. Mm -hmm. I really like the art style. Um, yeah. yeah, classic Mickey Mouse kind of art style, isn't it? Very think, much so. Yeah, the thing that gets me is the player count, two to four, mm -hmm. but it's cooperative. And generally when you see something like that, you'd go, does that mean you can play it solo as well? Mm. So it'll be interesting to see how the actual mechanics come in that you can't play it solo. It's yeah. usually it's because it's hard to, it's usually because it's hard. Uh. It's they. Normally too complex to try and control two characters if that's the case usually. Yeah. So that'll be yeah. interesting. Yeah. Character's going to be more varied and mm. you might need the support from other ones. But yeah, it'd be interesting and possibly in the future we might look at solo mode on that. Who knows? Mm. Mm. Nice. They'll probably do it with an app. Who knows? Go into the future. <laughs> Weird games next. Who knows? A computer in your hand. Who would have thought it? <laughs> <laughs> Never catch on. Mr. Babbage's thinking engine was good enough for me. <laughs> Sign <laughs> fridge with a crank on it. That's good. Gary's abacus. Mm. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. Where to next, Ben? Uh, so uh, stepping away from sort of like this interesting, strange Americana, we're stepping into a little bit of a different Americana in a strange way. Uh, and we're looking at uh, Fire on the Frontier, which is a new expansion for Blood and Plunder, which is about to pre-order now. Um, so, and bear in mind, I know very little of this period of history, but this follows the, and this is what they said, the explosive periods of the King's Philip's Wars and the King's William's Wars. So it's a perfect opportunity to dive in and play around with some different factions and forces as they sort of push the timeline on a little bit in Blood and Plunder. Uh, included in the book are going to be new force lists, new scenarios, as you might imagine, and also new rules for using fortifications in your games. Um, so if you wanted to hunker down in a fort in the middle of the woods, you can definitely do that. 
You're also going to be getting some new miniatures. Uh, so you have uh, King Philip, who we saw just above, uh, whose actual name was Metacom, which, as I've pointed out to these guys, sounds like a Transformer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't say the rest of this in some kind of Michael Bay way, I'm going to be very disappointed. King Philip. <laughs> Lens flare, yeah. Put that in now, editors. No. <laughs> uh, so Metacom was uh, quite the thorn in the side of, uh, of the British and stuff during this period, uh, sort of, basically really pissed off that everyone was taking over his native land and so was, would use his dastardly guerrilla tactics in order to take down the invaders and the colonists um, or as I put it legitimate tactics uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> because nothing should be fair in war uh, so yeah some really cool stuff for him however he was then defeated by one Benjamin Church, who was another of the miniatures you can pick up. Um, he was an individual who was quite well known for ingratiating himself with the native population and used their tactics and their ways of war to then sort of take uh, control of the of the different provinces and beat Metacom in his own game, as it were, which is pretty mm-hmm. neat. Um, so you've got two new character miniatures for both of those. So if you want to play out this scenario, you definitely can do. Oh, I should point out, he's meant to be apparently the first proper ranger, the American ranger. So mm-hmm. if you wanted to meet the real one, Benjamin Church is the way to go. And it's, he's not cool just because he's a namesake of mine, but there you go. Um, <laughs> you've also got a couple of new sets for those people that want to uh, put together the First Nations, the native forces nice. uh, of this period as well. So you have the Young Brave set there, which is pretty cool. Again, really nice sculpting from the team at um, Firelock Games. Mm. It will be really fun to see these dropped into um, mm. different, different armies and things, because obviously they can be fighting you know, for the First Nation troops, or you could use them as allies alongside your British and your French and that kind of thing as well if you wanted to. You've also then got the, and don't say this wrong, the Pinezis, sure. <laughs> which are a, another set of um, sort of First Nation troopers for you to use in your games as well. Whereas the Young Braves have got a little bit more of like kind of like ranged outlook on things. The Pinezis, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, are slightly more sort of up close and personal. <laughs> but then as you can see as well, they've got sort of like the rifles on their backs as well too, which is pretty cool. So they've clearly you know, so picked up equipment or mm. were given it by the colonial forces. Um, to use in battles and things like that. So some really nice stuff com- coming up for um, for Blood and Plunder with this Fire yeah. on the Frontiers expansion. Sort of, again, pushing the timeline on and playing around with different wars and different settings. But it's not just all about pirates and the Golden Age of Piracy and that kind of thing now, which is which is really nice. Um, and uh, again, because this is Firelock Games, these guys like heavily research everything they do. Um, so if you are yeah. into playing some pretty awesome games on the tabletop in a historical setting, mm-hmm. why not go and check this out? Yeah, I imagine things like the uh, braid work and bead work on the belts of those um, Wapanog natives is probably specific to that tribe. Probably, yeah. Wow. So that is the level of detail they will yeah. go into on it. And at the same time, if you want to use them in, in things like King William's War and, and the, the French Indian Wars, Northwest Frontier stuff, they'll work for that as well. So yeah. lovely to see. I, I take it they're going to be their standard metal yeah, I, I know they're starting yeah, to branch into so. some plastics, but I, I assume yeah, they'll be the metal sculpts, ones, they'll yeah. be metals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they do. They did um, a whole bunch of stuff through their, um, as they call them, fire starters as well. Yes. Um, so they've done some stuff in the past, um, and uh, these didn't come through that. But I would assume they're going to kind of bulk out the fire and the frontiers expansion with nice. more fire starter stuff. So if you're interested in sort of like essentially fundraising um, a selection of different miniatures, that's a really cool thing to go and check out from Firelock because they kind of like they source the sort of like interest for something could then take it from there which is really cool so um they can, you can get the things that you want from them which is neat happy days yeah. if you're curious there's a great youtube channel called Atenshe, which Ooh. good luck spelling that <laughs> <laughs> there, there are you's in there are you's in there that you're not expecting um he does a lot of historical stuff but he's covered bits and pieces of this uh he's in and around um new orleans but he's, oh, right, he's, okay. he's covered some parts of of uh mm-hmm. Philip and William's Wars, uh, which is interesting yeah. where he just goes on a little, essentially it's a one man guided tour where he is, mm. he is the guide. Wow. Uh, so it's worth checking those out if you're Very nice. interested in the period or just want to know a little bit more. Mm. Rounding stuff off then. Yeah, so rounding stuff off, I, I did have a new story in here and then I realised that John was going to be with us this <gasps> week. And I was like, hold on a second, I can't not put this in. So, <laughs> Hello. So Battlefront Miniatures have been doing more for their bulge American 
supplement expansion for Flames of War uh, with three new sets of tanks for you to go and check out. So you've got the M4 EZ8 platoon, the M4 Jumbo Tank platoon, and the M4 Sherman Late platoon as well for you to go and play around with, as well as Calliope launchers for you to strap onto the back of your Shermans if you would like to do so as well. I know nothing more about this. So, John, <laughs> why are these things you should have? <laughs> these, these are things. These are things you should have. Particularly the Calliopes. I think they are the most unique thing that uh, the Americans ever did to their tanks, uh, where they were just, we need mobile artillery, we need mobile rocket artillery because everyone else does it. The Russians have the Katusha, the Germans have the Nebel Werfer. Um, so we're going to American the hell out of this because we're putting 60 tubes of rockets on top of a tank. Uh, and why not? Hmm. Um, the late war Sherman platoon is basically, as it says on the tin, it's a late war Sherman platoon. It's an M4A3 Sherman instead of the stuff you got in the previous book, which is all Normandy period, which is hmm. M4A1 to A2s, uh, which are like cast hulls and stuff like that. And they're, you know, Visually, they're a little different. Um, but you get the jumbo, and the jumbo is... Uh, a particularly uh, cool one because the, there was a whole thing they wanted to make an assault tank to help infantry push through what they were expecting to meet in um, Jerry help me here which is the defensive line Parkburn Forest what is it uh, e yes that one that, that line that line of defense is I'm yeah. just going to be comments telling me that I'm yeah, stupid. 10 in points in the comments if you get what line of defense it was <laughs> get into it cookie <laughs> So they, they were trying to work on a tank that could handle breaking through defences like that, mm -hmm. take a lot of fire. So they, they were going to build a vehicle specifically for it, and they did a couple of prototypes and failed miserably. And they decided, well, why don't we just weld more metal onto a Sherman? So they did. They made them <laughs> heavier by 10, 10 tons, put all this extra armour on the front, and said, yeah, that'll do. Uh, so that's where the jumbo <laughs> comes from. Uh, so it's, it's really getting to tailor your force towards that end war period for the americans because mm. we've already had uh the migration books the german and the soviet books which basically take you to the end of the war and now we've got the american book that takes it to the end of the war for them technologically wise because they get pershings and all sorts of fancy stuff now as well so you're basically getting the opportunity to do everything from uh sort of october november 44 right through to the end of the war because nothing really changes beyond that so mm -hmm. nice Cool. The yeah. Calliope, um, it's hmm. available separately, but it, did they throw it into the army set as well? Is it is. Right? You get three of them in the army set. Um, you can either build those those three Shermans as just late war Sherman tanks, or hmm. you can put the, the Calliope's on as well. Um, although they, they advertise these as plastic, but mm -hmm. the ones that come in the starter box are resin, so I don't know oh, if they're in the okay. original sprue. I don't know if this is the same thing, only they're advertising it as plastic and it is kind of... It, well, it, a little while ago, Battlefront started replacing their metals with a injected plastic, so it's more like a resin than a hard plastic. Sorry, my God, so I wonder if it's just that, because that's come up a few times where they've said all plastic, and then there's been metal... Um, either metal components or metal crews and stuff in it, but I know they've slowly gone across, and it looks like a resin sprue with the big block on the bottom. Right. Uh, yeah. So it may just be their type of plastic. Mm. Siegfried line. Is it the Siegfried line? That's Siegfried line. That's it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we got there eventually. <laughs> the hamster. The hamster woke up. Hey. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're also doing uh, a selection of um, direct only options as well. So if you want to pick up uh, your Americans in their winter uniforms mm -hmm. for the Battle of the Bulge, for example, oh. as, this, as this book mm -hmm. is all about, uh, <laughs> you can play around with rifle platoon and armored rifle platoon. Then you've also got the winter kits for the mortars, the machine guns, and the anti tank guns as well. Mm -hmm. So while um, the other stuff will be available through retailers, like for example, store.ontel.com. Uh, some of the other My stuff will be, will be uh, direct only. Yeah. Um, so if you wanted to pick up the tanks, you can do that through us. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to get some of the additional winter stuff to make a more themed force, hmm. uh, then you can go and get those from Battlefront directly. Nice. That'd be nice to see. I assume they still do them. Uh, they used to do an easy company airborne set that had 
spears and winters and all sorts of years. I remember so, that, yeah. So uh, you could specifically tie your uh, airborne to easy company if you wanted to use those or they just made really nice command figures uh, over and above to add into other sections just to uh, mm -hmm. add a bit of variety to your plastics shall we say but, yeah. don't 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 forget you can't just do easy company with that set because the uniforms changed shut up grognard <laughs> There had to be someone, didn't there? Bloody button count. You, you can if you're doing uh, four in the bulge, because they're, they're spot on for that. No, but if you do want to accurately correct, listen yeah. to John. All, all my, all, all my lead from the mists of time. I'm, fine. I'm, I'm wired for cheese whiz, so no need to worry. Anyway, that's uh, your lot for the news this week. We're going to take a little bit of a break. And when we come back, we're going to dive into some 3D printing to see if we can tempt John with something else. Okay, so we are back and ready to take a look at some 3D printing. Mm -hmm. And this week, Ben, you've been going all, uh, I was going to say Patrick Moore on us there. <laughs> With night skies, I guess. Yes, I suppose. Um, yeah, uh, the sky at night, like night sky miniatures. Um, I need a little monocle. Um, but so a xylophone. A xylophone yeah. So this is another one that I've basically picked just to annoy uh, John. Good. Um, so this annoy. is a new set of um, well, not a new set, but it's been it's been around for a while. But this is from uh, Matthew Devonish, who sculpts up. Um, 3D printable STL files of, and you can see here, World War II vehicles. Um, they come in 156 scale, but they can also be scaled for 172 and 148. Uh, I can't remember what those are in millimeters off the top of my head, uh, but someone will fill in the gaps for me. Um, 20 mil, 28 mil, go. and then bigger than 28 mil, 28 mil. There we go. Um, recently, Night Sky were on Kickstarter, um, putting together a selection of um, miniatures for, as they call them, like the forgotten lost tankers. <laughs> there were lots of vehicles from the Soviets and stuff that nobody really did a lot of work with. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of like trying to fill in the gaps. Uh, and as you can see with a lot of this stuff here as well, there are some Soviets within this selection, but there's also a whole bunch of different tanks that I think are basically picked by, uh, by Devonish because he likes them <laughs> and has decided to sculpt them. Uh, all of the... A better um, way to pick. Yeah. Nah. yeah. <laughs> all of the, uh, the, 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 the tanks that you see here um, come with like, uh, come fully supported, so they're nice and easy to print off. So you basically just have to stick them on a bed and let them go, which is pretty cool. Um, you also, some of them will also feature drivers and things that they're done by another, another individual, but we'll have a look at in a second. But I'll pass this one over to you again, John. What do you think? Are these cool? <laughs> these these are vehicles that we don't see in wargaming a lot for a very good reason. Because <laughs> as, as as reality follows wargaming, the stuff you don't include isn't included because it was rubbish. Ah. <laughs> for the most part. Okay, he clearly has um, a very particular fetish for half tracks here because there's a few half tracks here and I... I totally, I am with him on that. Yeah, like, not, I've not seen. Um, he calls it a two five one slash eight. It's a, it's based on a two fifty half track. I know. Shut up. Leave me alone. Um, but it's the, it's, it's the schmuel, which is the take taking a early Panzer four main gun and going. What do we do with these now? Uh, well, the infantry like them as support guns, so let's stick them on something that will follow the infantry. Well, how about we put it on the infantry's transport? Yeah, sure. <laughs> cool. Where do the infantry sit now? Oh, it's fine. There'll be another half track with the infantry in it. This was just to fire the big gun. <laughs> it, that it works. works. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, when it comes to printing these, obviously you've got a resin 3D printer. Would these not be ridiculously heavy to print off and resin because they're quite chunky? If it, if he is selling them fully supported, then it shouldn't be a problem. 
uh, because they'll have worked out already the how heavy the supports need to be. It's more down to when you're setting your printer up, you make sure that the bed is properly clean and everything so that it adheres properly to those mm -hmm. first few layers as it prints. Um, I'd also imagine he's taken stuff like the tracks, the tires, uh, the gun, and if maybe a couple of smaller bits, and they'll they'll be separate parts. So there'll be a probably a main file for the hull of the vehicle, but the tracks and everything that are a bit more intricate will be will be separate. Um, that's that's how I imagine he's done it. Um, I think I that's how you break it down on the Kickstarter. Okay. So mm -hmm. I would assume that will follow through. But uh, yeah, yeah. Options. Well, there you go there. Options for file with and without driver Attached tracks separate. attached Attached all in one or split out. Nice. Yeah. Now you're you're probably not going to get as good a finish if you leave the tracks Everything on. Everything on. Yeah. Yeah, close. Of how the printer is going to work. But I mean you're that's actually quite a good picture of that, actually. Mm. Come with the printer, that's nice. Um I'm probably going to go ahead and actually get one of these and then I'll talk <laughs> about it on a future hobby time on XLBS. That'd be cool. Yeah. Mm. It's nice to it's nice to see something like this. I want to actually follow through on it and actually try it myself since a 3D printer doesn't take long for me to set up and run because I am far more successful at it than Justin. Yeah, this these seem quite nice. Uh, I'll have to make sure my print settings will all help it. What I really want is uh, this 38T over here with the little 20 mil turret on it. I, I like I like Panzer 38Ts a lot. It's been Although a fast little machine. Stuff on this. Yeah. Wow. I actually have one of these in War Thunder and it's terrible, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. War, War Thunder and World of Tanks is where people go to play ridiculous things like Polish tankettes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and realize that they're not involved in, in major war games for a reason. Mm. <laughs> they have no kids whatsoever. Um, oh, that does look really nice. It does. I know. that that's what That's what makes me like 38Ts because they're Czechoslovakian. They're built by Skoda of all people, and they're just wow. there. No way. When it, when it comes to like the, because obviously we know about the, the the war gaming scale of these. But for example, if I was a, a human being standing next to that, how yeah. how hot, high would I come up to it? Like, oh, yeah. I obviously, like, can see a little bit of a head there, but yeah. yeah. Uh, ben, you're probably up to. You're probably the height of the turret on this one because okay, right. are not are not big yeah. vehicles, mm -hmm. not all they're, yeah. they're something like that. They're kind of tiny. Mm. Yeah, because it's one of the things that I often feel with with tanks, especially when you look at them into like twenty eight mil, where things tend to be exaggerated or, yeah. or, or 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 pared down a little bit just so that it's easier for wargaming. Is that I often get wor worried about like how that actually works historically accurately and that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. it's cool to know that like. It should work with a lot of miniatures being up sort of like that high. I, I mean, if, if you want hilarity, go and have a look at a Panzer one with somebody standing beside it in real life because <laughs> they they look fictional. <laughs> really? Oh, they, surely wow, okay. it was it like the Flintstones? Did they put their feet out the bottom and rock? Gary <laughs> <laughs> and I, Gary and I are both taller than a Panzer one. Wow. Okay. They, they are they are teeny little things. Mm. Thirty eight T's maybe a bit taller, but yeah. height. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're quite small. The thing the thing is, if you're using these at 28 mil, um, you're probably better making sure that you're you're printing them out at like a true 156 scale because that fits better with yeah. the flexible action infantry. Okay. Yeah. You are yeah. more heroic. Um, what does Warren always <laughs> say? Proportioned. Yeah, um, yeah. Proportioned. Yeah. Yeah. So you get a better sense of scale if you're trying to make sure they're true skill compared to the infantry you're using if you're using mm -hmm. Warlord infantry. That's neat. Yeah. A lot of times you'll see, um, especially if people have based things for World War II on plinth bases or slope bases, yeah. because mm -hmm. that extra three or four mil underneath them all of a sudden makes the infantry look very big. Yeah. Like, but... Whereas if they're actually standing on the dirt, they should be grand. Like I, I, I like that in that case then with the bolt actions because that usually comes on those nice flat yeah. rounds, doesn't it? So well, it's better for that. But, uh, yeah. Heads are good. Seems, seems to be a lot of detail worked into the three D sculpts as well. Like there seems to be a lot of bits and pieces in there for you to pick out, lots of the bolts and all that kind of thing as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is always nice to see. Whether or not it's entirely historically accurate, I don't know, but I would assume it is fairly fairly accurate. So yeah. it 
if it looks like a hatzer and, and you know works like a hatzer, it's a hatzer. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's big time. A panther. Yeah. Oh, big time. I wonder if they've done the weathering to that or if it comes. Yeah, yeah. Ah, no, they've, so they've done a bit of damage to it. Yeah, it's nice. fl- flicking muddle over it as well. <laughs> yeah, see, that's acceptable. Just not too many bullet holes for us to establish. <laughs> yeah, I right, but removing a few of the, um, the side skirts and then denting it up a bit at the front, mm-hmm. to make it look like it's been banged round. Especially those mud guards tended to be very thin and immediately went away. Yeah, ooh, quite a lot of the the tool racks on that, but I, I guess yeah. that's down to. But either not wanting to or just it be too be fiddly, fiddly, maybe or something to mm. well, I guess. But. Possibly because they, they're a very thin part. So. Right, yeah. But that's something you can model yourself, I suppose, if you want to kind yeah. of add it a little bit extra. One thing I've always wondered about World War II tanks, right? Is that in games like Battlefield, I can drive a tank through a building. Now, could I do that with a Sherman? Could I drive a Sherman through a building and it'd be fine? Or D- depends right. on the building. It does depend on the building, but okay. it depends you, if you do it. Now, the Germans did this when they were showing off Tiger One when it was just coming out. Okay, they drove a, they drove a Tiger One through a through a house. Um, yeah, as a yeah. propaganda. But they had the 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 gun pointed to the back because if you point the gun forward, driving through a house, just you're bend. going to break the gun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know the bit that makes the gun run back when it fires uh-huh. you're going to smash that mechanism to bits and that's going to be uh, used. okay oh yes you can then technically okay. you've got to be careful <laughs> there's, there's i'll some, carefully demolish houses yeah, there's, some great, there's some great post-war footage they sold a lot of the shermans off cheaper than tractors in the states when they got home and there was a, a great piece of like Pathé news footage of some uh, demolition company who'd bought a Sherman and were just running back and forward through a house until the house went away. <laughs> right, this is how we do it now. I don't need to blow things up. There's a whole page of images of what this stuff was used for after the war, you know, in civilian use. Like these yeah. half tracks and stuff like that were used for all sorts of things. This, no, no, yes, no. No, if you're playing bolt action, if you're playing bolt action, don't don't bother. But it's got two guns, John. What's it must that, be better, John? right? They're more damning. Turn up the damage. Awful. awful. You say awful. Why? Explain oh. why this is awful, John. Why is this getting your tank goat going? It's it's a Russian copy of a British tank that was exported all over the world in the interwar oh, period. Okay. And everyone thought this is where tanks are going and then the germans went i don't think it is <laughs> <laughs> but again if you're playing a game like bold action i actually think these are better than panzer fours yeah. and tigers and like because it fits the game system better mm. i think i think early war and smaller tanks and tankettes work yeah. the minute you start getting into an arms race with yags and tigers and all the rest of it the wheels can come well the tracks can come off very quickly <laughs> Once your um, once your army list starts looking more like a zoo, yes. <laughs> very well put. Yeah, yeah. Artillery yeah. who is just cute as buttons. That isn't it? <laughs> has, Fruit, has really no like use in game, but just cute as all. Ah, I want so. one. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things that really drew me to this the stuff by Night Sky is that it kind of felt like, and as you pointed out, it's all sort of like atypical stuff that you wouldn't necessarily find mm. within like a Warlord range or, or or like Rubicon or something. It, it, it's a selection of stuff that will help build out a force and give it character and make yeah. it perhaps potentially feel a little bit more authentic. Yeah. The period, uh, so. the, the Raup and Schlepper. Oh. Oh. It's just a truck on tracks. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it. <laughs> I've I've seen a couple of these, uh, a couple of these in 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 this in the metal, so to speak, and they are so cute. Are they cute? <laughs> they're they're no, tiny. They're very tiny. Really? They're absolutely tiny. It, the, that cab should not fit two people in it, but it does. <laughs> they are yeah. the most pointlessly cute little vehicles the Germans ever came up with, and I love them. <laughs> And then they were on the war, they got bored and stuck guns on the back of them. Yeah. But oh, it's yeah, like... They put, they put it's packed 40 on one, didn't Yeah. <laughs> Fire it's, maneuver. It's like Ben said, though, if you want something historically accurate and you don't want to just put the best things in there for the authenticity of putting mm. exactly what was in the battle, this could definitely fill some gaps. 
Oh yeah, this works. This stuff works great as like little troop transports and stuff for like those mm. those niche infantry regiments that you that some of us historical nerds want to play. That literally you know? an open, a very very open top troops transport in the regard. yeah. Just <laughs> it's not the stream that one. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, all, they'll all be lined up on the seat so you can get the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but again i mean if you want to like john said a lot of the stuff went out for interwar right, so yeah. you could be doing um chinese russian you know yeah. battles of the 20s and 30s and stuff like that wow, uh, cool. with a lot of these things just you, should... you can expand it beyond world war ii to a lesser extent depending on what you pick up or you could do a what if Mm. Mm, very much so. Yeah. What if mm. somebody put a two centimeter flat gun on the back of a staff car? <laughs> <laughs> wow! The staff car would fly forward. <laughs> <laughs> that driver is getting severe hearing problems later. <laughs> I mean, he looks quite cozy. I'm not going to lie. One hand in and everything. Mm. I should quite I have, that. I have he's he's turning. Yeah. I have seen footage of, you know, the, the half track with the 3.7 on the back, Jerry, the automatic yeah. 3.7. I've seen footage of one of those driving out of a hedge with it firing over the driver's shoulder. And I'm like, no, oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the driver's like that. He's like ducked right down, but you know, he's deaf. Oh, <laughs> maybe he was deaf going into the war and that's why he got that job. <laughs> <laughs> I also wanted to highlight someone uh, that um, Jerry just put up here as well. So mm. just some miniatures. Uh, is the provider of a lot of the crew that you saw, um, included in some of the vehicles there. So uh, if you're interested in looking beyond that, just some miniatures also has lots of stuff individually that you can download and print off um, as and when you see fit as well. So if you want to pick up, and again, strangely enough, this is a bunch of kind of like uh, sort of Soviet stuff, really. Mm. Um, if you want to... Yeah, it's sort of like odd things you wouldn't necessarily think about potentially as well, which is pretty cool. So you've got things like fins and everything there too, which is neat. So you can play the Winter uh, War. Uh, is the white death in here? Ooh. That would be cool. Don't mind yeah. me, just gonna have a look. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> just, it's just a, it's a nice sort of mix map, mix and sort of map of, of different things and sort of occasionally random stuff as well nice. uh, that you might want to throw in and sort of use to uh, to build up an army or potentially give. And add a bit of a character to to like a, a unit or something that you're using on the tabletop. I mean, I, I, how cool is that in, as like a, a a different take on Soviet infantry to use mm. on the tabletop? It's really cool. Yeah, your workers, workers mm. of the world unite. Nice. They, they could be in Korea as well, mm. couldn't they? Oh yeah. yeah. Especially with the big uh, quilted <laughs> buff coats on them. Yeah. Oh, oh, the, there is a Finnish sniper, oh, so <laughs> no, practically there. Practically, <laughs> just need to just need to resculpt that. Oh, Ski squad, yes. I once uh, played a guy who was playing the Finns in bolt action, and he had lo- everything was on ski infantry, mm. and I was like, "This doesn't quite work for our summery Normandy field, but whatever." <laughs> <laughs> You're mud skiing, clearly, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're fins they don't let a little thing like no snow stop them That's from skiing true. everything is snow <laughs> just do everything downhill you'll be fine any country that has developed competitive naked ant hill setting you know skiing snow yeah, yeah whatever whatever mate I'll be over here sitting on this termite mound <laughs> smoking my pipe beautiful stuff yeah, and, really and a wealth. I mean, we're not even a halfway there through it. Look, there's some you get passengers for the, for the week, for passengers for the uh, vehicle. Yeah, oh, nice. One of them's having a smoke, which you definitely don't want to be doing because all you're doing is light yourself up for the sniper that fed over there <laughs> yep. in the snow. Yeah, but and that is just some miniatures. Yeah, so yeah, so uh, there's like four pages of that stuff. I think, as you can see here, they started off with some very basic things, but they've sort of improved over the last however many months and stuff they've been working on things. Mm. And it's just great if you want to throw some additional weird and quirky things potentially into your uh, your World War II armies alongside, for example, the tanks that we saw before. So, And if you wanted a grandpa, then oh. here's your grandpa. So. <laughs> Somebody's got <laughs> to defend Berlin. Oh. Yeah. 
If it has to be <laughs> old can't men even kids, alter the children. <laughs> if it has to be old men and kids, it will be. Don't oh, worry. Uh, speaking yeah. of children. There you go. Yeah. Ah, there we are. See, everybody gets an iron cross, mm. even the 10-year-olds. You two can replay Jojo Rabbit on the tabletop. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that was a, a technically a pair. Uh, it was. Little, You've got two for the price of one. Yeah. There, that's pretty yep. good, isn't it? Yeah, we, yep. we approve. Well, I approve. John may or may not approve based on the tank or armored fighting vehicle presented I'll, to him. I'll probably have something to show for the next XLBS. Top, on one. You, John's letting us know whether he approves or not. We have to wait for the time. Answer. Will tell. I'll count that as a win. Mm, I think it's so. Track I buy. <laughs> right. Time to round off the show, as mm -hmm. always, with a couple of Kickstarters. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim centre over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. And this week, uh, we're going to start off with a bit of fantasy. And Artel's Magnetic Heroes. A modular world of magnificent heroes. Whose funds just went up just at that very second that you flicked on it. Which is yeah. Quite <laughs> yeah. It's uh, role-playing miniatures with a ton of optional gear. I don't think that really does it justice. Um, they, they sent a set of each of them. So there are 12 figures in three groups and you can get them from a big group down to individual miniatures. Uh, and I think it's like 130 various arm options, which nice. you can pretty much go nuts with. Uh, the whole idea behind it is if you're playing a skirmish game or incorrectly playing an RPG uh, <laughs> with miniatures, then you can swap in and out weapons and equipment as you go. So you don't, you don't need to have multiple versions of your characters uh, just to have the different equipment on them. You can drift in drift out uh, i will say the they were prototypes so the drilling for the arms wasn't exact um so i was having the magnet sitting flush on the hands whereas the actual fact they should be deeper into the wrist yeah they're being re recessed aren't they yeah yeah, yeah so they're, they should be recessed it works more like a pin um so i a couple of issues with i think the devoted um staff was a bit top heavy but that would obviously have fixed that matter mm -hmm. uh, and it it's just ridiculous how many options there are yeah um, yeah only a couple of variant heads at the moment some elves a demon slash tiefling looking horned fellow and an orc the majority are human and they're all male characters to begin with but mm -hmm. I imagine this is a test to see whether or not people are interested in it. And based on the way the funding is going, it does look like people are interested in it um, because it will come with every, you know, every set comes with a selection from a basic set where you go, these are the basic weapons that a wild have. amount of weapons. <laughs> uh, and it just goes up from there. Um, wow. They have what they call rare, epic and legendary. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's it's not a cheap buy-in when you look at the amount of bodies. You're mm. going, okay, that's that's pricey for that amount of bodies. Mm. But when you realize the amount of combinations for weapons, yeah. heads, and additional equipment, uh, it changes very, very quickly. I do quite like these. Oh. So they have a pet add-on. I absolutely love the pets, although there is no squirrel. Um, there is an Irish... Uh, wolfhound though and a couple of birds a foxy stoaty stoat yeah yep. um you know so cat snakes get in there but not squirrels what's going on with that <laughs> uh, but the the, the yeah. wardrobe barrel and throne sets are just fantastic slash baffling slash peculiar so you can dress your <laughs> dress your board it may just be what it is you can get a version that is then filled with loot um, so you can have various equipment cupboards or whatever stuff full of things, or they can be mimics, or they can have undead in them for 
reasons. Yeah. My favourite of which has got to be oh, the barrel wearing skirt undead. He was just he was, having a he, he was aware of his nakedness. He's having he? a gay old time. I just really, loving life. I really hope he walks around like this. Oh yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> what I love about this is that we we've seen our tell stuff coming before. Yeah. You know, in the studio. We've we've had our tell sculpts in our hands and mm. we, we could I think Jerry and I can definitely attest to the quality of this stuff. Mm. Um, yeah. If if they nail all of this in the same quality that, that we've all seen before, then what what I'm imagining is if someone who's a very devoted DM, very mm. devoted DM to be fair, was going was taking this stuff to like a convention or something like that and having people sit down is like, right, make your character, literally just magnetize your character as they described. That would be DM. really cool. Mm. Yeah. That's but interesting. As we're playing through, he's awarding them stuff yeah. and that's what I see. I see as you level up, you get a new weapon. Hmm. You can change it over. You level up, you change, I don't know, what kind of hat you want. Your new weapons, you obtain a new item. I think it's great for developing for a story. If, if someone was to do that at a con and had every single piece of it professionally painted with a big 3D board, you could you could have like the most fun evening of gaming with someone that's brought Very all this stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. It's simply the best experience they could with it. I mean, just ridiculous amount of options. Oh, yes. From bags of coins to individual coin, there's one where it's just a coin on, like, thumb and four fingers if they're about to flip it or just hand a single coin. And you're just going, that's very tiny. That cleaver's great. Yeah. Well, they say black magic, but if you put the lamb leg in the other hand, then it's just a tavern keeper. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. It does. It deals with that thing as we've said, which is kind of like the, the thing that plagues a lot of people when it comes to making a role-playing miniature. You buy one when you're level one or three or something, hmm. and then suddenly by level eight, you've got two magical items, an animal companion, a new suit of armor, well, not suit, new suit of armor, all that kind of thing. So having something like this kind of means that you can be like, ah, cool, so my wizard now has this staff rather than an orb. I'll just switch it out, mm-hmm. rather than having to buy an entirely new miniature or something like that, so... And as you can see, as Jerry is showing up here, mm. even the prototypes were crisp as hell. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the only so. difference was, and I, I have a terrible feeling Stepchenko told me that I needed to drill further into the rest, and I misunderstood that as um, as having them sitting flush rather than having them in depth. So, so these are very well. Actually, they're they're fine for what they are, but mm. they could be better. They're good. Yeah. It could be better. So the magnet itself, I can see that you're moving it ever so slightly. If mm. you were to pick it up and put it upside down, would any of it fall off? Are they quite sturdily on there? Uh, I didn't glue a single magnet in place. I pushed for everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, and they were, these are prototypes, but they were still resin cast prototypes. They're not 3D printed. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could literally push fit and not have to worry about the magnet coming out again. You can see one in the neck there. Um, so yeah tight as nuts chuff if you want to be (laughs) if you want to be better uh, more comfortable (laughs) with it a drop of glue on the end but the problem with putting glue is if you start pushing something that's very tightly fitted and Mm -hmm. the glue suddenly takes you could end up with the magnet glued half out of the rest instead of firmly embedded at the base where it needs to be i would say i would leave them without it um because even the, you set magnet at least yeah yeah uh, the, the magnet will will set quite happily and i think if you start fighting with it you may run into problems um just, especially just when make, make yeah. sure you get your, your polarizations the right way around when you're doing this oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll, have, you'll have a paladin who can't hold anything uh, but, well, that's okay because right paladins are terrible <laughs> yeah. paladins are the worst but they go flambeurs gorgeous oh i just love the idea of equipping yourself with a new set of armor before going into a particular battle or changing out for a bigger weapon or i just think it's really great to customize visually your game yeah. um yeah, it's yeah. kind of like having hero forge but real yeah the other, thing that's, the, thing, the other thing that's really nice about that is that sometimes you'll you'll set your miniatures down in a, on a on a table and you'll be fine it out and then the like for example the orc will have his axe like up here mm. and you'll be like oh but if you just nudge your shield a little bit, suddenly you're actually raising your shield to deflect the blow and yeah. stuff. So you can add to that kind of narrative on the tabletop, which I think is which I think is brilliant. So mm. yeah. yeah. 
Very they good. are 12, 12 classes, so covers the standard um, Pretty much everything the from likes D&D, of more D&D or less, and yeah. Pathfinder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so whether you want to play a, a ninja, a drunken bard, or a paladin, they're all there. Yeah. Uh, Well-funded, and 14 days left, two weeks between now and, now and funding. So interesting to see what other stretch goals they have, and hopefully they'll be back with more. Uh, I imagine they will. <laughs> I, I imagine they will yeah. return to this because uh, mm. it seems to be successful. Uh, so see where they go from there, whether yeah. they do uh, a set of female characters yes. in the same, yeah. and then yeah. maybe after that they can start delving into other races as well. But mm-hmm. Magnetic Heroes, modular miniatures for fantasy role play from Artel. Mm-hmm. There we go. On yeah. there, your boy, yeah. <laughs> and to round off the show, we're going all sci-fi, Ben. <gasps> yeah, yeah. So um, local battle mats are back on Kickstarter with their new campaign, which is called Beyond the Blue Nebula. Uh, this is a selection of digital battle maps for you to use with the likes of virtual tabletop and all that kind of thing, Roll20 and stuff. And it's all been designed so it will easily fit into those different programs. Um, as you might have guessed by the name Blue Nebula, this is also taking things off into the depths of space. Mm-hmm. Um, not only have they done what Lope do well and created really awesome battle maps like the ones that you see here with all the grids and stuff on them for you to move your characters around on digitally, but they've also done the actual full ships as well. So if you wanted to do out star battles in Starfinder, for example, you have that option to do that. If you then want to then take that and then sort of go inside the ship as you're in the middle of a boarding axe or something, you can do that. (laughs) But then built on top of that as well are all the tiles and token sets. So you can build customized interiors, as you're seeing here. You can then furnish all of that with the dozens and dozens and dozens of consoles, chairs, yeah. lockers, everything you could think of that would go into a sci-fi ship or a facility. (laughs) You have all that to play around with. And that's the thing that I think is really nice about this is that it has all that customization to it because you can dive in and you can make it feel like an interactive experience for your adventurers. Because when you go into a room, when you see things like chests and lockers and stuff, your players are more sort of like invested in sort of playing around with them, using them in in combat and all that kind of thing and investigating them, which I think is is something that you really want when you're, you know, DMing or GMing a game. Um, I really like what they've done sort of like some alternative versions of things. So you saw um, the the main ship that you see there, which had sort of like the kind of everything's fine and dandy Mm. look. And then you had the haunted spaceship version, which is all sort of like green and dark. Yeah. And that's clearly where aliens are living, ready to hunt you down, which is pretty cool. Um, As I say, and as you saw in the video, it's all been sort of done so that it's ready for online play. So it has the visions and all that kind of thing. So as your character is walking down a corridor, they'll actually see the vision cones and stuff, which I think is really awesome. They've also not just done um, sort of ships, but they've also done, as you can see there, starscapes and and, and um, sort of like planetary landscapes as well. So if you wanted to set something up with a, as a backdrop uh, for like a, a space dogfight or something, or maybe you wanted to just set up something of them sort of like rolling out across the plains of a Martian planet, then you can definitely do that as well, which is really cool. Um, in addition to having the different mats and the token sets and all the other bits and pieces, that are sort of there functionally for play. They've also been working with a uh, a writer to do uh, an adventure called Medusa's Child. Mm-hmm. So if you back at a certain level in the campaign, you'll be able to pick up uh, the Medusa's Child as an adventure and, and sort of dive in and have a go with it. There you go. It's by Stephen Hart. That's, the, that's the name I was searching for. So he uses everything that is available in the pack so you can sit down and start playing Starfinder with that, which I think is really cool. Um, if you're interested in this, but you don't want to pledge for it immediately, maybe you want to give it a try, they do actually have a Messier shuttle download that is totally free um, from um, Price to RPGs. Free. Yeah. So if you want to go and download that, as I say, for free, it is available for you to go and pick up. You can see what you think of the kits and what they do, and uh, then maybe come back and, and, and buy the rest of it through the, uh, the Kickstarter. I think it's pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Um, so this is a – it's digital only, which I think is mm-hmm. the first time Luke's yes. done digital only. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I okay. see if you're not into the the VTT part of it, you can also get as print ready files, so mm-hmm. you could yeah. get them and then um, 
just print them off. Get them printed out. Or do it professionally. Yeah, get, yeah. get a professional yeah. to, to do them and have them yeah. sitting. So if you're after the physical side, you can probably do that as well. I think. So, a quick look. Well, early bird, I'm not sure when that's going to finish. Maybe presumably, done by the time you're watching. Presumably <laughs> soon, but even then, yeah. 20 quid for everything. A lot, yeah. So even if you are planning on just going in and getting these um, printed out after the fact, it's not going to be much more than the no. cost of a book to get your hands on everything and what you do with yeah. it is up to you. Just have to get your scissors and your craft knife ready. Yeah, 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 I think what's great about this it being because obviously loads of people are playing RPGs digitally at the minute, and I suppose there's different places around the world that you can't necessarily get hold of the book, the physical book that Loke produce or the books. Mm. This is a great way for you to print and play, like you say, Jerry. Just print it off, have it professionally, and anyone can do it. Having the files as simple as that is, and anyone can sit down and run their yeah. uh, mm. space adventure. Very much so. Really cool. Um, I will say that they have got the. I think it's the big and the giant sci-fi books available as sort of add-ons i think for this so if you wanted to pick up the actual some physical products in there sort of ring bound books you can do that and also i mean you never know uh i i have no inside info but if this goes particularly well potentially we could see these being made physical in the future we'll have, we'll have to see how it goes and how the kickstarter funds but uh local are always coming with, a, with something surprising uh, i know a lot of people who use a lot of their kit for their role-playing games and they say they really really enjoy it be it fantasy or sci-fi or cyberpunk um so yeah if you're interested in playing some starfinder and you want some locations to do that in go and check out beyond the blue nebula over on kickstarter at the moment so, yeah. sweet to the beat 17 days left on that at the time of well no actually 17 days left when you watch this you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. maths complicated maths <laughs> right that wraps us up for another week uh, we will return on Sunday for our XLBS show, uh, where I believe we're getting a Justin. <gasps> Switch room this week. Ooh. Exciting times. We'll have a little waffle about our hobby and yours and anything else that uh, floats our boat, really. Much more relaxed. Come on over if you're not already a member of the Cult of Games and you can get a 30-day trial on tabletop.com to see what we're up about. Have a browse around, see what I've been up to, whether or not it's been cutting out tumbleweeds from horsehair or what who knows <laughs> who knows what i've been up to i'm going to stare crazy in this room you'll be surprised what i do on my own devices <laughs> uh, also don't forget all of our slip coverage from last week if you haven't had a look there's the blog there with a whole host of prizes mm -hmm. you just need to comment on the videos where the prizes are being offered to be able the chance to win and i'll be picking those next week so oh, until, and, and oh. i was gonna say and don't forget the Global Gunslinger League. If you know someone who wants to take part in that and dive into some Wild West Texas, make sure to share it with them and get stuck in. Mm -hmm. uh, as I say, loads of videos for you to go and check out at the moment. So, so go and do that as well. The wiki yeah. wiki wah wah. The wiki wah. Yeah. And on that note, we'll see you next Friday. Bye bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.